Made up of 12 countries and some independent territories, South America is a land of incredible diversity. It can tell stories of ancient cultures and civilization and offer the naturally magnificent on a scale found nowhere else on the planet. It's hard not to be captivated and entranced by this enormous subcontinent, but you just never know what's going to turn up next in this wonderland. They can be Lost cities to bloody lagoons, mystery ruins to forgotten factories, 15 shocking things recently discovered in South America Part 2. Most Crowded Island Santa Cruz del Islote is an artificial island located off the coast of Colombia. It's part of an archipelago of San Bernardo, and the large population for its size has given it notoriety for supposedly being the most densely populated island on Earth. It was built by local fishermen who used coral, debris, stone, and other materials to build up the land at low tide. According to legend, the settlers were attracted to the island not only for its abundance of fish, but also because there were no mosquitoes living there. They can be really annoying. Today, a population population of about 500 live on an island the size of two football fields, making it one of the most densely populated islands on Earth. Less than 20 families live here full-time. There's a school, a restaurant that functions as a port, and a small town square with a cross in the middle. The economy is based on fishing and customer service, and tourism guides, which locals provide to the luxurious hotels in neighboring islands. It's vibrant, and life never seems to stop. Children learn to swim and fish from a very young age and are often seen near the seashore trying to catch a fish or playing with small boats. There's a strong community spirit here. A family who needs help can count on the support of its neighbors. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. Speaking of shocking things recently discovered in South America, would you believe that lots of mummies have been found here? And this hand is an example of how skilled they were at preserving bodies. The Chinchorro mummies are mummified remains of individuals from the Chinchorro culture, found in what's now northern Chile. They're the oldest examples of artificially mummified human remains, having been buried for up to 2,000 years before the Egyptian mummies. Radiocarbon dating eventually showed that the mummies were more than 7,000 years old. By the looks of it, it's almost like the pinky and the ring finger of this mummy may have been severed before the mummification process began. But what if it's not a human mummy? Did you consider that? Is this the mummified hand of an ancient alien? Think of the possibilities and leave your thoughts in the comments below with the hashtag missing topic. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? largest swimming pool in the world. This astounding private resort in Chile, about 60 miles west of Santiago, basically has a view of two coasts at once. San Alfonso del Mar directly overlooks the Pacific Ocean, sure, but it also boasts the world's largest swimming pool, mind-bogglingly massive and hugging the coastline so closely that it's practically a second beach. The pool's a half mile long, covering nearly 20 acres in area. That's bigger than 15 football fields, and it holds a colossal 66 million gallons of filtered ocean water. The saltwater pool, which held the first ever Guinness World Record for the largest man-made lagoon, is the exact same crystal clear turquoise hue of the sea just beyond it. Its size is truly hard to fathom, as you would expect from a billion dollar resort. The facilities at San Alfonso del Mar are top notch. Guests are able to enjoy a fully equipped gym, a hair salon, multiple restaurants, a pub, a nightclub, an art gallery, an open air amphitheater, a supermarket and more. Children have plenty of playgrounds and social space while each in every apartment boasts uninterrupted views of the pool and the sea. If you've ever daydreamed about a vacation spot right on the water, then look no further because it does not get any better. <laughs> Witch Markets Known as the Mercado de la Bruja in Spanish, the Witch's Market in La Paz, Bolivia is a collection of shops, booths, and makeshift stalls where women dressed in layered skirts and wearing bowler hats trade in souvenirs and dabble in the dark arts. On sale at the Witch's Market, loads of trinkets, alpaca sweaters, and eccentric clothing. Here you can also get dried frogs and rats, owl feathers, seeds, 
herbs and insect parts, as well as medicinal plants, love potions, ceramic figures, and amulets. There are also statuettes, and when you talk to the vendors, you learn that different statues serve different functions. Many of the items on sale are significant to ancient indigenous rituals and practices that are still very much part of living Bolivian culture. Yatiris is the name of the medicine healers and fortune tellers who wander the streets offering their skills and souvenirs to residents and travelers alike. Interestingly, the witch's market is predominantly composed of women business owners. This market has existed for years and years, and many of the shops and the knowledge that's exchanged within them have been passed on through generations of women. <laughs> Devil's Lagoon The Laguna Roja is an extraordinary lagoon with blood-red colored waters which lie in a desolate territory just north of Chile between the Andes Mountains. This place is surrounded by old legends about obscure and supernatural forces and cursed stories of sacrificial offerings. All mysteries considered, it remains a sacred place for its inhabitants, a place to be respected and honored for its traditional beliefs. This lagoon was totally unknown to the rest of the world, that is, until 2009. According to the locals, centuries ago, an Almira community settled on the banks of the spring, not knowing that its owner was the devil himself, who as a warning had given it a slight red color to keep away anyone who discovered it. The inhabitants ignored the threat, drank from its waters, and died for it. That's how they contributed to the red blood that the lagoon has today. Like this legend, there are others, and the same happens with scientific explanations. There's not been many studies on the subject, therefore, there's still no conclusive explanation, although it's believed that some sediment and certain types of algae give this unique color to the body of water. Mm -hmm. Geyser Field El Tashio sits at an altitude of roughly 14,000 feet, an extensive, highly active geyser field. This marvel of geology sits within the snow-capped Andes Mountains. Located in the northern section of Chile, El Tashio covers an area of 12 square miles with geysers, boiling water, fountains, fumaroles, hot springs, mud pools, and mud volcanoes seeping steam across its surreal expanse. It's the highest geyser field in the world, the largest in the southern hemisphere, and the third largest on the planet. But exposure to the hot gases and water can result in burn injuries. In both sudden eruptions of geysers and fountains, and the fragile ground above vents and above boiling water concealed beneath thin covers of solid ground increase the risk to unaware travelers. On occasion, the fragile crust surrounding the geysers gives way beneath the weight of an individual too. In terms of location, this makes it one of the highest situated such fields known to man. The name itself means grandfather, and the location also ranks as rather remote. Due to the presence of extremophile microorganisms on the vents at Altashio, the site has also been studied as a possible analogous example of life on Earth early and potential past life on Mars. <laughs> Devil's Nose Train When the president of Ecuador in 1895 announced that a new railway line would be built connecting a coastal city with the capital in the highlands, many people at the time thought that the Andes could not be conquered by rail. Despite protests and discouragement, the president hired U.S. contractors and tasked them to build the most difficult railway in the world. But frequent seismic activity, heavy rainfall, jaguars, poisonous snakes, malaria, dysentery, and yellow fever delayed progress. The most technically challenging part of this rail route, however, was a sheer rock face known as the Devil's Nose. To ascend this 2,600-foot cliff, the engineers carved a series of steep switchbacks that allowed the train to climb by alternately advancing and reversing up the tracks. The switchback track involves the train moving past a junction, stopping, and then heading back down the section to the next junction and moving forward again, continuing down the mountain. It's considered one of the world's most dangerous train rides. The section of the Devil's Nose was responsible for some 2,000 deaths during construction. It was a remarkable feat for a developer country to build a train system over a century ago that crossed the Andes. Lost City of Chan Chan Built around 1300 AD, Chan Chan is the largest pre-Columbian city in the Americas and the largest adobe city in the world. At its height, it was home to an estimated 60,000 people and contained a vast wealth of gold, silver, and ceramics. 
The wealth remained more or less undisturbed after the Incas conquered the city, but once the Spaniards hit the stage, the looting began. Within a few decades, little but gold dust remained. The capital consisted of ten walled citadels, also called royal compounds. Each contained a royal burial mound filled with vast quantities of funerary offerings, including chambers full of ceramics, weavings, and jewelry. The complex's centerpiece is a massive restored ceremonial courtyard, where the thick interior walls are mostly decorated with recreated geometric designs. Although it must have been a dazzling sight at one time, devastating El Nino floods and heavy rainfall have severely eroded much of the city's outer portions. You can still visit the impressive restored complex and revel in the broad plazas, royal burial chamber, and intricate designs that remain. Fish, waves, seabirds, and sea mammals are represented throughout the city. The best option for a visit is with an organized guided tour. <laughs> hammer-wielding monkeys. Understanding wild animals' memories, thinking, and problem-solving abilities is no easy task. However, some field sites provide a unique opportunity to test wild animals' cognition. Facenda Boa Vista in Brazil is one of those sites. Here, wild-bearded capuchin monkeys naturally use stones and anvils to crack open nuts. These bearded capuchin monkeys were the first South American primates that scientists ever observed using tools, only spotted in 2003. Although these monkeys only spend about 2% of their time using tools to access floods, the nuts they eat are an important secondary food item that are available year-round. The challenge is that these nuts have tough shells that can't be cracked open without a tool. This population of monkeys has figured out how to crack nuts by placing them on a wood or stone anvil and then smashing them with rocks. Since the discovery, researchers have been studying the decision-making and strategies involved in capuchin stone tool use because using stones to pound open food looks remarkably like what anthropologists imagine one of the earliest forms of human tool use looked like. Researchers study these monkeys as a way to understand our own evolutionary past. <laughs> Bizarre Pendulum Tree Parkia pendula is a species of neotropical evergreen tree found throughout Central and South America, a group of flowering plants that are part of the lagoon family. And as you can see, it has a distinguished pendulum-like flower that dangles from it. The flowers produced are a few inches in length. Each one contains hundreds of small flowers, each packed around a spherical receptacle. The flowers themselves hang off of thin, woody stems known as pendicles approximately a few feet from the crown of the tree. Each fertile flower has ten androgynous stamen evenly joined at its base. Though typically hermaphroditic and containing a single ovary, some flowers are functionally male and lack both ovaries and styles. We did say they were a little bizarre. Some flowers can produce nectar in large quantities, but nectiferous flowers open less fully. Despite having a larger diameter than fertile flowers, nectar is typically produced at dusk after blooming and contains sugar and 14 amino acids. Pretty cool, right? Flowers typically bloom from December to January in Costa Rica and from January to August in Venezuela. Locals are known to harvest the fruits. <laughs> Billboard Water Fountain According to the UN, about 60% of the world's population will be living in cities within the next eight years, a human migration that adds more and more strain on cities' sanitation and resources. One of these many urban centers is Lima, Peru. The second largest desert capital in the world receives less than two inches of rain a year, yet has the highest atmospheric humidity anywhere. The University of Engineering and Technology of Peru and an ad agency saw great opportunity in this invisible source of water and created a billboard that can capture capture this humidity and turn it into potable drinking water for nearby residents. Using reverse osmosis and a purifying process to cleanse the collected water droplets, the billboard then stores the water in tanks. The water is dispensed at the bottom of the structure by nearby residents, who've been able to collect thousands of gallons of clean drinking water from this single billboard in just a few months. These residents no longer have to rely on contaminated well water or worry about where their next clean drink will come from. The billboard generates about 25 gallons of water each day, and a simple faucet gives local residents access to it. And the billboard reportedly only cost about $1,200 to install. Hmm. Rock Climbing Dinosaurs At the Bolivia Cretaceous Park, workers found the largest concentration of dinosaur footprints in the world on a giant 3,900-foot long by 260-foot high wall. These 68-million-year-old impressions derive from the late Cretaceous period, where the place was the shore of a huge lake. Prehistoric animals came here to drink, eat, run, romp, and fight, and while doing so, they left their tracks behind. 
These impressions solidified in the clay shorelines during dry periods, only to be covered up by more sediment that would gather more prints. Hence, layer upon layer of dinosaur footprints is now visible in the crumbling cliffside at this incredible paleontological site in South America. About 5,055 footprints are strewn across the dinosaur wall with 462 different tracks that were made by 15 different types of dinosaurs. Most impressive of these is the world record-setting trail left by a baby Tyrannosaurus rex known as Johnny Walker. Amongst them are several trackways of theropods, ornithopods, ankylosaurs, and sauropods, with the latter group accounting for 26% of the trackways. Then in 2006, the dinosaur park opened for tourists to view the striking impressions. It was once, like Jurassic Park, crawling with dinosaurs. Mountain Sarcophagi These unusually large pre-Inca formations at an archaeological site in the Uncabamba Valley in Peru, and they're called the Sarcophagi of Carajay. Created sometime in the 15th century by the indigenous here, the seven standing burial capsules, formerly eight, one of them collapsed during an earthquake, are located almost 700 feet above the valley floor. Referred to by local residents as the ancient wise men, each of the figures stands a remarkable eight feet tall, constructed out of grass and clay and built right into the cliff face. Some of the graves even still retain the human skulls that were installed on top. It's believed that the original architects of these graves worked from natural outcroppings, which were later destroyed either deliberately or naturally. While a great deal of the local culture was lost, the sarcophagi survived largely intact due to their seemingly impossible location. While the sarcophagi are largely protected from the elements by the rock walls around them, birds and other small animals have damaged them over time. It wasn't until the mid-19th century that researchers were able to scale the cliff face and examine the mummies, dating them and speculating as to their new construction. <laughs> Mysterious Ruins The name means Door of the Puma, and as far as archaeologists know, Puma Punku was a thriving ancient town. It's situated high above a desert plateau of the Andes Mountains at an altitude of more than 12,000 feet. It's significant in Inca traditions, the place where it was once believed the world was created. It grew and expanded as its people did. And then one day, suddenly, the inhabitants vanished and a great civilization came toppling down. This is all that remains of a holy site in the jungles of Bolivia and has attracted much attention as of late. Yet in this isolated part of the world stands amazing smooth stone structures featuring precision-made cuts, clean right angles, and expertly fitted joints. While many of the structures are still standing centuries after their inhabitants disappeared, most of the buildings are scattered and broken around the area, leaving researchers to wonder what possibly could have tossed around impossibly heavy buildings. The megaliths are among the largest on Earth, with some weighing several tons. Today, rumors continue to grow that Puma Punku's massively heavy stone block structures were cut so precisely that highly advanced ancient technology seems to be the only explanation for their craftsmanship. Forgotten Factory In 1928, northern Brazil was captivated by an enticing bit of news. A man was coming with the promise of reviving their ailing economy and introducing them to a whole new way of life, Henry Ford. Officially, Ford's interest in Brazil was a business venture. The monopoly on rubber maintained by Britain was driving up costs for his new cars, so he wanted to find a cheap source of latex that would allow the Ford Motor Company to produce its own tires. His goal was also to build his vision of the ideal city, and that city would bear his name, Fordlandia. It was established in 1928 as a prefabricated industrial town intended to be inhabited by 10,000 people to secure a source of cultivated rubber for automobile manufacturing operations in the U.S. Ford's project failed, and the city was abandoned in 1934. Equipment from the sawmill and generator was left to the elements and vandals over the years, rusting in the thick Amazon air. The iconic water tower still stands, though it no longer holds any water, and the Ford logo proudly painted on its long since faded. But in the past decade, however, Fordlandia has enjoyed something of a renaissance. After the population languished at under 100 for several decades, it's rebounded to about 3,000 people in recent years. 
never-ending lightning, cue dramatic roll of thunder and sound effects. Known as the everlasting storm, this phenomenon is known as Kutakumbo lightning and it takes place in Venezuela where the Catacumbo River meets Lake Maracaibo. Storm clouds gather in the same spot five miles above up to 160 nights per year, lasting for about 10 hours at a time. The lightning bolts illuminate the sky in a combination of brilliant whites, reds, and purples. This is literally the most electric place on the planet. There are several theories to explain this continuous storm, including high winds which sweep across the lake forming clouds when they meet the Andean mountains. Others link it to the boggy marshes releasing methane gas. Some scientists consider the everlasting storm to be the single biggest generator of tropospheric ozone on the planet. There are an average of 260 storm days per year here. A quarter of Venezuela's population lives in the highest concentration of lightning on Earth, but the locals are totally used to it. Sailors have embraced this phenomenon for centuries, using the Catacumbo lightning as a beacon like a lighthouse made by nature. There seems to be no end in sight when it comes to cool stuff being discovered in South America, but we wouldn't have it any other way. What's next? Like and subscribe and find out. There's more where that came from.